Remember around Christmas time, there was a guy from Botany in Sydney who found a bomb on his car. Theo is his name. Why was the bomb there? What was this bomb threat about? Theo was flying a Palestinian flag at his house. He was subsequently doxxed by pro-Netanyahu government activists, pro-Israel activists on social media. His address was published and he was widely defamed. The story was a real fizzer in the mainstream media. It was really played down. The bomb was described as a fake bomb. It wasn't a fake bomb. It was a real bomb without a remote detonation device. Instead of handing the matter to terrorism police, to the feds, it was given to a junior constable at the local police station. His investigations were thwarted because he got COVID, apparently. When Theo's lawyers questioned the police on the progress of their investigation, they found out that this bloke, the constable, had gone away for three weeks Holidays. This is the story of grand double standards in policing, of the way that governments are treating racism in Australia. Just now, as there's discussion in Canberra, in the nation's capital, about new doxing laws that have been proposed by the Netanyahu government lobbyists to our government. This is Theo's story. The day after Christmas, a photo of our house along with my phone number and our address, were posted in a private Facebook group called Jews of Sydney. The comments under the post were riddled with fascist hate speech and dog whistling, all of it under people's own names. The comment thread had already been partially sanitised before a whistleblower screenshotted it and got in touch with us two days after the bomb. The whistleblower had given this information to police before us. They had not paid it any attention. We sent this material to the police. They questioned the whistleblower about their motives repeatedly and asked them, says Theo, some fairly weird questions. Then the entire fact of all the material relating to the doxing apparently got lost or something, certainly got ignored. Theo goes on. In the course of investigating the bomb, my partner and I collated the information regarding the doxing, including explanations of the hate speech and possible calls for violence confirmed by an academic specialising in this area in Middle East politics. Upon discovering that the police appeared unaware of the doxing, information of which they had been provided earlier, all the evidence previously, we again supplied them with this nine-page dossier. That was a few weeks ago presumably as a result of today's story by Farah Abdurrahman, published by Michael West Media, we received an update on the investigation this evening. This is yesterday. My impression of the update was that in the last few weeks, the police have not made any further progress. Myself and others believe that in investigating the doxing we experienced, it's likely to be pivotal in finding the man or woman who planned and constructed a bomb to then place it along with a political demand and threat of further violence. Farah's story, which is attached, includes some portions of the dossier we gave to police about being doxxed. Comments are right there as the authors wrote them, along with their names, which they had no qualms showing on a group of about 6,000 people. So this is the message from Theo to Albo. It's clear that you aren't protecting me, and it's clear you aren't protecting us. Meanwhile, there are proposals for anti-doxing laws which have been brought by the Zionist lobby. You can read the original story on the website. There will be updates today. Senator David Shoebridge is going to raise the matter in estimates today, and we'll see where it goes from there. Suffice it to say that this story has not been in the mainstream media, although the mainstream media is aware of this story. They have been provided with the evidence, with the details, multiple mainstream media outlets, and they have chosen out of self-censorship and fear not to publish the story. We need an end to this double standards. It's only creating greater anti-Semitism and greater Islamophobia.